What's up guys, it's Alex here, back for another video, and in this video I am going to do a guide on taking pickets, uh, similar to the guide on taking hives that I did like a month ago. The only thing is that I'm going to break this video up into two parts, so this is going to be part one of two. I just decided to do that because I realized there was quite a lot to cover, so I didn't want to make the video way too long to watch. Uh, so this is going to be part one, and then next week I'm going to do part two. So if you don't see the town you're looking for in this video, uh, be sure to check out the next video as well. Now, uh, as far as taking pickets goes, um, you want to have fast units, right? Uh, pickets, the wolf raiders that guard the pickets, they're really fast and they hit really hard, but they are not very tanky. So the best way to uh, counter them is to kill them as fast as possible and not take any hits from them. So. As far as the most uh, kind of easy ways of taking pickets uh, with mass slow or mass haste uh, or some other kind of magic, I'm not going to be covering those. I think those are pretty self-explanatory. Basically, all you need is a stack of units that can outspeed the wolf raiders. And then, you know, you cast mass slow or mass haste right away. And then you just pick them off one by one, um, you know. As, as much as you can without taking hits on your power stack. So, but I'm gonna be covering the more standard ways because you're not always gonna have mass slow or mass haste. It's actually not that common to be taking them with mass slow or mass haste um, because you will likely need to start taking them earlier before you actually have expert earth or before you have expert air, unless you're starting with somebody like Grindon or you know maybe Labetha or maybe Brissa, you know, who can get uh, the mass slow or mass haste by let's say level you know four or five. But in most standard starts, in most most standard uh, you know starting heroes like Shakti, for example, or Galthran, you're not going to have that until a little bit later. So you're likely going to need to be taking pickets with something else. So uh, the first method that I'm going to cover is if you have, it's going to be the most reliable method. This way, uh, you're not really risking much, and um, you're you know you can basically take any size picket. Uh, if you have a stack of four angels. So this first method is if you have a stack of your power stack is both fast and strong. So angels, dragons, you know, something like that, um, that works really well. For tower, genies also work pretty well. Uh, but basically what we want is a stack of angels here that one shots the stack of wolf raiders that we're going to be facing. And we just want some one stacks. And the one stacks don't even have to be too fast. They don't have to outspeed the wolf raiders. In, in some other demonstrations, I will show you guys that um, you will need, you know, for best results, you will need one stacks that actually outspeed the wolf raiders. Uh, in this case, we will just be using regular one stacks, basically. So with a stack of four angels, you can take any size picket. Um, the only thing that you do want to be aware of is morale. So it's always good to have an anti-morale artifact because if they get morales, uh, you could get unlucky and you could potentially lose an angel. But uh, without that, you shouldn't really lose anything here. So let's just get into it. You see, auto combat is even able to do it by losing one angel, but I think we can do better. And what we want to do here is we want to intelligently pick off stacks one by one and take uh, as few hits as possible on our angel. So what we're going to go for is this stack first. You see, what's going to happen is these guys don't want to attack the angel because they are afraid of dying to retail. So when there are one stacks available, they will go for them. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to back up with the one stacks. These two stacks move first. And they're the ones that are going to be taking out the pixie, uh, the harpy stacks. And then this stack does not actually reach our angel. So this stack is the one that is actually going to attack the angel and is going to die to retail. So we're only going to take one hit. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wait. So you see exactly what I said happened. And now we can isolate these two stacks. And this stack will not reach when we attack this stack from this hex because now we're on a wait turn so we get to hit them twice before they even move so we'll go for this stack then this stack and you see this stack did not reach and we can just take it out 
So it's as easy as that. Uh, now you do see they did not get any morales. So if they did get morales, uh, we could have potentially lost an angel. Uh, you know, if we got really unlucky with morales, maybe even two. But you know, if you do have an anti-morale artifact, this way is pretty reliable um, to take pickets. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys uh, the kind of uh, more uh, less reliable, but more standard, more common way um, of taking pickets because you're not always gonna have the four angels or dragons or whatever. Um, you may need to actually take the pickets on your day one or uh, you know power stack that you have um, of level one or two units. So. The things that you do want to remember here is you want to have the power stack that is going to one shot the Wolf Raider stack of whatever size picket you're facing. Here we have almost 140 troglodytes, which is going to be enough to one shot the 30 stacks of the maxi picket. And uh, we do also have an anti-morale artifact because, like I said before, uh, morale can actually screw you. With the angels, it's you're not going to die. But when you're doing it on a power stack like this or something like Grand Elves that I'm going to demonstrate in a little bit, or um, if you're doing them with Oceanids on Cove, morale can actually kill you because those stacks are going to be really squishy. And, uh, you know, they if the Wolf Raiders hit them, you're, you're dead, basically. So... Here, what we want to do, we have the anti-morale artifact. Um, it's going to work even without the anti-morale artifact, usually for troglodytes. Uh, but for best results, we do want to have the anti-morale artifact. And we also want to have one stacks that all outspeed the uh, wolf raiders. Um, I will show another method where we only have one Harpy Hag stack because it may not always be viable for every, everybody to have six stacks that outspeed them. Like, for example, if you're doing it with Necro, and it works pretty much the same way for Necro, you're just going to have skeletons instead of troglodytes. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, if you are doing it as Necro, you're going to be using either upgraded whites or vamp uh, upgraded vampires as your uh, one stacks, and you may not necessarily have six of them. So, um, you know, I will show you guys how to do it on just one uh, stack that's faster, and the rest are just regular one stacks. Now, it is important to always have a one stack that is going to outspeed them, and it's important to have haste. So this method, what we're doing is we get the initiative, we get the first move, and we're going to haste our power stack so that the power stack moves before the Wolf Raiders. So, and for that to happen, you want your power stack to be speed 6 or higher. So uh, Troglodytes on Shakti work, Skeletons on Galthran work, um, Gnolls on Dracon work. Uh, or Null Marauders on Nod Dracon on Swamp, Wyvern work, uh, Cyclopes work, so any of that, <clears throat> if you do, uh, if you haste them, they will have speed 9, right, uh, or speed 10 in the case of Wyvern, so you will be outspeeding the Wolf Raiders, which means that you get the first move and you can pick the stacks off one by one and take as few hits as possible. Now, the other thing that you do want to be aware of is you do want to have enough spell power to actually last the whole fight, right? Or, or you want to have enough mana to be able to re-haste um, again and again if you need to so that your haste never expires on the troglodytes because when it expires, you will take a hit the next turn because the wolf raiders are going to start moving first, right? So... Just make sure that you have spell power four or five here, or that you have uh, you know enough mana to cast haste multiple times, and just make sure that you haste it before it expires, a turn before it expires. Ah. So you see, auto combat is not able to do this, but we should be able to. <clears throat> so. And the reason that we want to have the one stacks that are fast uh, is because we can control the positioning of the Wolf Raiders much better this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to move a couple of one stacks here. The Trogs take out this stack. We did get morale, but I'm just going to ignore it just to show you guys that this, is, uh, this can be done without morale. Uh, here, I'm going to move one stacks to bait this guy to attack them so that I can pick him off next. And I'll move one more stack here. This way, this stack is not going to reach them, and these two stacks are going to stay down here. And then the rest of these guys, I'm going to move here. All 
Okay. So now we're going to take out this one stack. Uh, this harpy is going to stay here. So uh, same as before, they're going to go for the harpy stack unless, uh, you know, because they're going to be af afraid of dying in retail, right? So this harpy uh, hag is going to stay here and these two are going to move over here. So this one is going to def. And I'll move these two stacks here. Um, actually did not work quite as I wanted it to, but that's all right. I think we should be okay here. So we're just going to take out this stack. And now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to move the troglodytes away, bait one of these guys to attack from here, and then this stack is going to move back so that um, it stays back. So let's try that. Okay, perfect. And now we can take this stack out, and then next turn we can take that one out because it doesn't reach. So you see, uh, sometimes uh, they may move a little bit differently. They don't always follow a certain pattern, but you just want to kind of make sure that you stay out of the range of uh, their hits and pick them off one by one. And now if we did uh, somehow take a hit from one of these, it's okay. It's not that bad because we would still have about 100 something troglodytes left. And uh, we would also uh, already have 12 cyclopes. So the next picket, we can just use the cyclopes to take. But in this case, we were actually able to do this uh, without taking any hits on the troglodyte stack. And that's why we wanted the six Harpy Hag stacks, uh, because this way uh, we can guarantee not taking any hits on our troglodytes. All right, so now I will show you guys how to do it on regular Harpy. So same scenario, um, actually we don't have an anti-morale artifact here, but it should still work. So I'll show you guys that even if you take some hits on your troglodyte stack, it still works. Um, but you do need to make sure that you have at least one Harpy Hag stack so that you can cast haste on your troglodytes. All right, so here we can back up and do that. Okay, again, morale, we're gonna ignore that. All right, and what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna hit. We're not gonna wait because uh, there is a stack that's gonna reach our troglodytes and uh, it is likely gonna attack them because we don't have enough one stacks to actually bait them. So we are gonna take uh, this, um, we are gonna take this stack out. and try to move the harpies back. Okay. And now it looks like we're gonna take one more hit, but we'll be okay, I think. Okay, perfect. Okay. So see, uh, we lost 25 troglodytes, uh, still very acceptable because we lost 25 troglodytes but gained tw uh, 12 cyclops for that. So, And now the following pickets that we do, we can basically do the same thing and just haste our cyclops. The 12 cyclops are going to be enough to one shot even with melee of the 30 stacks of wolf raiders. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to show you guys um, Fortress. So with Fortress, basically what you want is Wyvern. Because uh, Wyvern on Swamp are uh, going to have speed 8, which is going to tie the speed of the Wolf Raiders, right? So in this case, we're doing a maxi picket again. And 13 Wyvern is enough to do it. So 13 Wyvern is enough to do it. We are probably going to lose a Wyvern because we probably will take a hit. So, But here we're only bringing the 13 Wyvern and 1 stacks. Uh, again, we don't have an anti-morale artifact, but um, in this case, it may also be beneficial to use somebody who actually has attack and maybe has offense. But as a Beastmaster, if you do take some hits, you're not going to take that much damage. So it's, um, you know, it, it, it's whatever you want. If you want to risk it and if you want to have, if you have fewer Wyvern, uh, maybe it's better to do some uh, it on somebody who has better attack. 
But, um, you know, if you have a decent enough stack of Wyvern and you uh, don't have an anti-morale artifact and you want to uh, make sure that you, you know, if you do take hits, you don't take that much damage, then sure, it's definitely good to do it on a Beastmaster. And um, the other thing that I'll mention about Fortress is Fortress, um, you don't necessarily want to take pickets um, with Fortress because, well, not always anyway, but sometimes it may be your only option, but usually you want to take pickets if they're really close to the road or if you have wings or pathfind boots because obviously you have the swamp terrain penalty and when you are, you know, like, let's say taking like this picket, for example, right? You have to bring them back through the snow and you don't have pathfind boots, you don't have pathfinding or wings. It's going to take you a long time because that's going to give you the terrain penalty. However, you know, in this case, you do have a lot of pickets. Uh, so, you know, it probably is a good thing to collect them. We already see five pickets over here. So six so yeah that's that's actually a lot so in that case you know you just want to be careful about your chaining but just keep that in mind just keep that in mind if you're off-roading uh on swamp or snow or um you know even sand then um you know you are going to be facing that terrain penalty all right so here we just do we just do it a similar way uh that we did before we just take them out one by one as much as possible <clears throat> all right and uh again here we're gonna do that and um you know they'll go for the one stacks and we'll take out the um as many stacks as possible so they don't hit us okay it's fine so we will lose one wyvern here. Yeah, but that's fine. Uh, one wyvern in exchange uh, for 12 cyclopes, very, very acceptable. And obviously if you have monarchs, if you have wyvern monarchs, uh, you know, it's can, it can be even better because you will definitely be outspeeding the wolf raiders, you're not tying speed. And you can also use serpent flies to control the positioning of the wolf raiders uh, as I did with the harpy hags. Okay, uh, now I'm going to show you guys Rampart. Um, one thing I'm going to mention real quick is I'm not going to be doing a demonstration for Necro. Uh, Necro will basically be the same as the demonstration with Dungeon. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not, but basically it's the same thing. You're just using skeletons instead of troglodytes, right? Uh, but it's going to work pretty much exactly the same way. You're going to be hasting your skeleton stack and you need a one stack that can outspeed the Wolf Raiders and you do it in the exact same way as I did it with Shakti on travel beds. Now with Rampart, it's a little bit tricky. So with Rampart, it's one of those towns where you could die. Like if they have morale, so I do have an anti-morale artifact here, but if they get morale, you could die because your elves are not gonna be very useful at all if uh, the Wolf Raiders get in their face, right? So here you do wanna have an anti-morale artifact. And uh, we're taking a maxi picket. For a maxi picket, you're gonna need about uh, 22 Grand Elves and Expert Archery. And we're also gonna need about 60 Centaur Captains. So that's, uh, you know, that's what's gonna allow you to take a maxi picket reliably if you're only taking it on army. Obviously, you know, if you have Mass Slow or if you have Haste or if you have some other army, uh, you, can, you can do it with that. But this, I'm just going to show you guys what it's going to take to take it with Rampart on just army. Obviously, you're not always going to have 22 uh, Grand Elves and 60 Centaurs uh, on your, you know, day one, two, or three. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, if you do have them, you know, you uh, th this is how you can actually take them. If you take a smaller picket, you know, you can just make sure that you check the picket. And if you have like 18 elves or something like that, then you can take a size three, for example, right? So just make sure uh, that you're, you know, <laughs> taking a size that you can actually one shot it. Right? Again, remember, it's important that the grand elves actually one shot. So here for a maxi picket, we need 22 grand elves and expert archery. And also about 60 centaur captains. We are going to be losing some centaur captains here. 
<clears throat> now notice that in most of these, the positioning has been uh, slot one for the power stack, right? So we do that so that we can try to isolate them as much as possible. So you see here, auto combat cannot do it, but we should be able to. So here, we just need to be really intelligent about how we're blocking them off. Because we, again, don't want to take any hits on our Grand Elves. So first, we take out this stack. Now, the Centaurs are going to be blocking some of these stacks. So what we're going to do here is we're going to block off this stack. We're going to block off this stack. And we're going to actually block the Grand Elves like this so that this stack does not reach them. Morale again, we're going to ignore. And this Centaur uh, Captain stack is actually going to attack uh, this stack of Wolf Raiders. That's why we are going to be losing Centaur Captains, but hey, it's better than losing our Grand Elves. And like I said, this stack here is blocking off this stack of Wolf Raiders. You see, this stack did not reach, so we're fine. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to reposition the Grand Elves so that we don't get hit. And these Centaur Captains are actually going to go down here. This one is going to finish this stack. Okay. So you see now, actually, this is very good since our, um, you know, these stacks cannot reach the Grand Elves. We can pick off this stack and then the Centaur Captains can kind of keep this stack busy. But you see, if they got morale, if I did not go at this with an anti-morale artifact, if they got morale in any of those cases, they would have hit our Grand Elves and we would have been screwed. So this is why it's really, really important for you to actually have an anti-morale artifact. Um, you know, or you, if you go into it without one, then just know that you can die. Okay, and here actually we are going to sacrifice uh, some of our centaur captains because what's going to happen is if we move them away, we cannot kill both these stacks before they hit us. So they would hit our grand elves. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to hit the stack with the centaur captains here. And we're going to finish them off with the Grand Elves. Actually, we could have probably not taken this last hit also. But um, yeah, but you would be losing uh, Centaur Captains here. But still, I do think that this is a good trade. Uh, 50 Centaur Captains for 12 Cyclopes. You, I could have probably done this a little bit better. Uh, like that last hit in the end, I could have probably not taken. But... Hey, it is what it is, and you know you do need to make some sacrifices in certain cases. Okay, guys, so these are, I believe, all the demonstrations that I wanted to do in this particular uh, video. <clears throat> so in the next video, I'm going to show you guys uh, Inferno, Tower, uh, and Castle. Um, and as far and, and also stronghold and as far as cove goes and conflux uh, I've already done a guide on conflux basically doing it with Luna with conflux you're just gonna want to do it with Luna uh, so I will just leave the video uh, link in the description below and for cove I actually found a guide that somebody else did before that I feel like uh, demonstrates it pretty well so I will also leave the link in the video description below Okay, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And as always, uh, if you guys want to see more Heroes 3 content, I stream live on Twitch uh, Fridays through Mondays, starting around 10 a.m. Ukrainian time. And one more thing is we are going to be doing our very first giveaway uh, as soon as we hit 1,000 uh, followers on Twitch. So if you're interested in getting in on that, check out my previous video, the giveaway announcement. Uh, basically, you just have to follow me on Twitch and follow and like the Facebook page, and uh, you will be eligible for the giveaway. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.